Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Case of Interest Coburger, brought to you by WNEP and Newswatch 16. I'm Stacey Lang. Each week, we break down the latest developments in the case against Brian Coburger. He is the Monroe County native accused of murdering four University of Idaho students back in November of 2022. Uh, we're awaiting his next appearance in court, which is preliminary hearing set for June. But about each week, sometimes it's, it's, it's weeks in between. We we learn a little bit about what's happening behind the scenes by way of uh, public court documents that are released on the Idaho Courts website every week. And we're here to be a resource to you to help you understand what's happening. Um, if you're interested in the case or you're just interested in following the local aspect of this story. There's a lot to talk about this week uh, that cover a lot of different areas of the case. So we're going to jump right in, heading to that uh, Judicial Cases of Interest page uh, for the Idaho Courts, which we make available to you on WNEP.com. Um, if you want to take a look at these documents yourself. About two weeks ago, we talked about um, the largest release of documents so far since the arrest was made in December, and that's what you're looking at now. Um, these are all orders to seal and redact the findings of different search warrants. Many, many, many search warrants in this case um, for all different sorts of things, uh, web services, emails, banking services, retailers, um, all giving us kind of a roadmap of where investigators have been looking to investigate this case. There are a few that were um, of interest that were released uh, later than that big batch that were released later this week, earlier this week, I should say. Um, and, and of particular interest is this order to seal and redact for 1122 King Road. Uh, which is, of course, the address of the off-campus home where those four victims were living at the University of Idaho when they were murdered. Um, this basically, this order that is the only part of the search warrant that's made public um, is telling us that the home was searched um, and the findings of that search are under seal. Um, it doesn't tell us what was found. Um, the only search warrant return we've been able to see are the search warrant returns that were uh, filed here in Pennsylvania court after Koberger's arrest. Um, and the other order to seal and redact the other search warrant that's of interest, I think, that's new is for TikTok. Um, and here specifically says that they search, they asked um, for a search of TikTok accounts for two of the victims, Zana Kernodal and uh, Kaylee Gonzalez. Uh, that's of interest because we do know from the affidavit of probable cause when Koberger was arrested on December 30th that uh, we know, you know, one of the one of the reasons why investigators were able to uh, hone in on when the murders took place is because they were able to tell when Zana Kernodal was on TikTok um, in the overnight hours of, of the day of the murder. Um, so I, I presume that this search warrant is related to that information that was collected um, ahead of Koberger's arrest. The other thing that is of interest um, this week that was released, it has to do with um, that King Road address. There's an order to seal and redact the uh, the discussions that were had in an in-person uh, meeting between the judge, the prosecutors, and uh, Mr. Koberger's attorneys uh, to discuss things that were recovered from 1122 King Road. Um, and if you're if you're looking at this line right here, that's what we're most interested in. The courts did um, make this stipulation saying that the the evidence collected from the home uh, is going to remain in the property of whoever is possessing it now, which would be the prosecution, presumably. Um, and then some of it may have been shared with the defense at this point. But any remaining personal property is what it says of those four victims, Madison Mogan, Santa Cornado, Ethan Chapin, and Kaylee Gonzalez, as well as these two redacted names we know from the initials BF and DM that are referring to the two surviving roommates at King Road, um, is, is ordered to go back to their families. Um, so that is hopefully a relief to them um, at this point in the, in the investigation that they're able to to recover some of those things that they haven't been able to have access to uh, since since the murders took place. 
And the last thing we're going to talk about, we actually had a story on Newswatch 16 done by reporter Amanda Eustace. Um, so if you want more information um, and some insight from an attorney here in our area, um, I'd take a look at the story we did earlier this week on this particular thing, which is notice of Brady disclosure and request for protective order. So uh, this means that the prosecution is letting the defense know about possibly exculpatory evidence, which means any kind of evidence that could potentially um, prove Koberger's innocence. It also is any kind of evidence that could later call into question uh, a legit the legitimacy of a witness that may be um, presenting at trial. We don't know a lot about what's going on here, but this line in this uh, order filed by, by the prosecution kind of um, shed some light that this uh, Brady Giglio material is related to one of the officers involved in the above referenced case. If you can follow my cursor, that's where I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That material in the form of a confidential internal affairs investigation is hereby submitted in camera to the court. So we know now from that, those two lines in that document that uh, it, a police officer that was involved in the case, we don't know who that police officer works for necessarily, um, is under investigation by internal affairs, which means it basically for, for anybody else means an HR investigation, essentially. Uh, it could be anything. It could be related to this case. It could be completely unrelated to this case. It could be as serious as an alleged crime committed by this officer. It could be as unserious as a minor traffic violation. All of those things would be investigated by internal affairs. So we don't know what that means. We don't know if this is good news for Koberger or not, um, but we know that that information is is being shared and, and that's another step towards a preliminary hearing and ultimately a trial. So as we're discovering a lot of these uh, documents that are released every week, uh, sometimes provide more questions than answers. Um, but as they're released, we're gonna be here for you to to try and answer what we can um, and, and see how this case develops. So for now, thanks for watching. This has been Case of Interest, Coburger.